It feels weird to be creating a video and talking about next year while there's still a little bit of this year left for us ahead. But as the old saying goes, those who fail to plan are planning to fail and the best time to prepare for next year right now. This is especially true considering everything that we've gone through in this last year and if you want to set yourself up to not just survive next year but to actually thrive. Plus, let's be honest, this last year was kind of a dumpster fire. And make no mistake, when next year rolls around, there's going to be more businesses that fail, close, and are forced to pack up their dreams and move on too. And that sucks. But on the other hand, there's also going to be those businesses that grow, that capitalize on take up even more market share and build even bigger, better businesses. And that's what I want for you. So let's get to it. Now, before we get into the practical, actionable tips that you can use to go out there and really secure your business's future, we first have to take a look at what the economy is even going to look like next year so you can plan for it. Now, I'm no economist, but fortunately, the economists have done me the favor of creating different alphabetical scenarios, essentially describing each of the economic recovery options or situations or possibilities with a nice easy to remember letter. All right, so the very first possibility is something known as a V-shaped recovery, which looks like a V. Essentially, we start out at the top, which is where we were before all this madness happened. We came crashing down and then we bounce right back up and we're better than we were before, or at least the same. Clearly, this is the most desirable of future situations or possibilities or options. If happens, well, there's not much you need to do other than capitalize on all your good fortune, just like everybody else. The next is a U-shaped recovery. What this means is that we were up nice and high, we came crashing down, and then we're gonna stay down for quite some time before we make a gradual recovery in the economy later in the year. The next option is a little bit more turbulent, and that's the W-shaped recovery. Essentially what this is, is we're up and then we're down, and then we're up and then we're down with all sorts of different shutdowns and then reopenings and then shutdowns again and the economy just kind of getting bashed around. Not ideal, but not as bad as this next one, which is an L-shaped recovery, or I guess it's not even really a recovery at all because it looks just like an L where we come crashing down and then we stay down. Essentially an L-shaped economy rather than a recovery is where the economy comes crashing down, it never recovers and business and the economy and all of that is fundamentally changed forever. Now the optimist in me doesn't believe this is going to be the case. I believe we will bounce back pretty much always bounce back. However, there are things you can do as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a marketer, to put yourself and your business in the best position possible and to capitalize whether we get a V or a U or a W or an L or whatever other letters the economists can think to throw at us. All right, so the very first thing that you can do is probably one of the most important things when it comes to structuring your marketing. And that is, as boring as this is gonna sound, to have a marketing plan. You see, a marketing plan is going to be the strategy it's going to be the ideas and the tactics behind what you're going to do as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a marketer, in order to generate new leads, new customers, new clients, new sales, to grow your business, to grow your revenue. See, here's the deal. Whether we're talking about a V-shaped recovery or a U-shape or a W or whatever it is, the businesses that continue to have opportunity volume or lead flow or new customers and new clients and new sales and new revenue, they're going to be okay. You see, there's very few problems in business that can't be solved with cash flow, with having more dollars coming in. I mean, if you have legal problems, you can hire a lawyer. If you have tax problems, well, you can pay them off with cash. If you have high expenses or high overhead, again, more cash flow coming in is going to enable you to cover those expenses and put yourself in a pretty good position. Long story short, you need cash flow, which means you need customers, which means you need marketing. And the best way to do that is to be strategic about it and follow a plan. Now, if you've never created a marketing plan before, I appreciate it may sound a little confusing or overwhelming. I mean, what do you include and where do you even start? Fortunately, I've got your back. I'll make sure to link up in the description box below a link to a free copy of my one-page marketing plan, which will walk you step-by-step -step through some of the main things you need to think about and plan for in order to set yourself up for success. So make sure to check that out after the video. All right, so once you've got your overarching marketing strategy kind of dialed in, well, the next thing you're going to need is a bit of a variation or a subset of the marketing plan, which is a content plan. See, here's the deal. We already know about the true power of content marketing. We've seen it work. Other marketers swear by it. I swear by it personally. I mean, it's one of the main reasons that I've built up the brand and the businesses that I have, pretty much all on the back of content. Well, 
This year showed us the power of content and it really created a large gap between businesses creating content and those who weren't creating content. And next year, that gap is only going to get wider, which means the best time to start creating content for your business is right now, today. Seth Godin says that content marketing is the only marketing left and he's right. Let's think about it for a second. If you create an ad or you write a social media post or you have an about page on your website or a services page or you do a podcast or a YouTube video or anything like that, it's all content. This is why it's incredibly important to peel back the layers on your business by going through your marketing plan, figuring out your ideal customer avatar, that target market that you're trying to serve, and then really figuring out their pains and their problems and their frustrations, being empathetic to where they are right now and what they're going through so you can create content that meets them where they are. You see, there's an expression that I love and I wish I could remember who to attribute this to, but it says that customers don't buy when they understand, they buy when they feel understood. Kind of a variation of the old Roosevelt quote that says, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. To show you the true power of content though, all you really need to do is take a look at some of the biggest businesses out there. Some of which, like Red Bull, even have their entire own media companies strictly dedicated to creating branded content. Long story short, to succeed and to survive and to thrive next year, you're going to need to create more content a lot more content. You can create long form content like YouTube videos or podcast episodes. You can create short form content like little blurbs for Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn or Twitter. You could start a show or answer customer questions or do live streams, whatever floats your boat. So long as that boat is being floated by content. If you're struggling and trying to decide what kind of content to create, well, Big push for video content as well, which has proven itself as a valuable driver of marketing success and of building rapport and trust and all of those amazing things that most businesses are after. All right, the third thing that you're going to need in order to truly be successful next year is something I rarely talk about on the channel because it's not very tactical, it's not even very strategic, but it is incredibly important and that is soft skills. You see, as an entrepreneur or business owner or marketer, you're a leader, which means that other people are looking to you for inspiration and for ideas and for guidance and for leadership. Plus, this last year beat up a lot of people, emotionally, financially, spiritually. People are feeling overwhelmed, frustrated, kind of drained. This is why next year and now, really, now more than ever, is a good time to start focusing on yourself and on things like personal development, as woo-woo as that sounds. Here's the deal. Skills like resilience and adaptability and strategic thinking and problem solving, well, they're going to continue to be valuable forever. See, these are things that can't be replaced by artificial intelligence or virtual reality or bots or even low-level employees. These are high-level skills that are gonna serve you for your entire life. Plus, if it's any indicator for just how demand these skills are, well, the vast majority of my consulting calls over the past few months have been equal parts marketing, business, and personal stuff. Again, People have been getting beat up pretty hard and they're looking for you to step forward and to be that light of hope and of optimism and of inspiration and of leadership. So make sure to look after yourself so you can look after others as well. Of all of the things that we talked about today though, however, the thing that's going to have the single greatest impact on you and on your business is creating that marketing plan, which is why you're gonna wanna make sure to download your free copy in the description below, as well as check out the video that I have linked up right here on creating a marketing plan. So make sure to check that out now and I'll see you in the episode eight. It always starts with the market. In fact, market is so important that it's baked right into the word marketing itself. Oh, see, there it is.